All right, folks, uh, let's get started. Uh, my name is uh, Nico Kabar. I'm a solution architect at Tigera, and uh, I'd like to welcome you today uh, to kind of do an overview of Calico and Kubernetes network policies. I will spend some time uh, doing an introduction on um, just the whole concept of uh, network policies uh, within Kubernetes and kind of highlight uh, highlight the, the key differences between Calico network policies and Kubernetes network policies uh, and showcase some of the examples and when to use uh, which. Um, so just a bit about myself uh, real quick. Um, as I mentioned, I'm uh, a solution architect at Tigera. Um, I was previously at Docker and prior to that at Cisco. So pretty much my uh, tenure in the industry has been around um, uh, networking, containers, uh, and the cloud. So this is what I'm kind of pretty passionate about, um, uh, what we do here at uh, Tigera, which is uh, pretty much the intersection of all those uh, uh, great uh, uh, topics. Um, so um, uh, before we kind of jump into uh, Calico network policies and Kubernetes network policies, um, just doing a kind of quick refresher of uh, what is uh, Project Calico and, what, uh, and who is Tigera. If you haven't, uh, you know, heard of us or, or uh, used us before, uh, so Project Calico is an open source, uh, community-driven project, um, um, uh, kind of fueling um, hundreds of thousands of uh, clusters out there as a default CNI and and um, and policy enforcer for uh, Kubernetes workloads. I uh, kind of started around the same time um, uh, Kubernetes started and kind of helped drive uh, a lot of this pack for uh, the, you know, the container network interface CNI spec um, and the policy, uh, network policy spec as well. Um, as I said, uh, Calico itself is being used by hundreds and thousands of, of users out there. Uh, we know more than 150,000 clusters are, uh, uh, Kubernetes clusters are powered by Calico today. Um, and uh, the extension of, of uh, the network policy as actually goes beyond just Kubernetes. Uh, we actually, um, Calico can provide uh, network security for traditional workloads like virtual machines and host base, basically uh, Linux workloads. So um, just gonna, uh, yeah, a couple of points uh, uh, that I uh, would like to also add around just Project Calico as a whole. Um, you know, it's, um, it's blazing fast, uh, blazing uh, fast uh, uh, layer three network for Kubernetes uh, uh, based on native uh, Linux uh, data plane, um, uh, data plane uh, technologies. Um, uh, you can use Calico in, uh, you know, with encapsulation, without encapsulation, depending on where you're running Kubernetes, how you're running it, and your kind of network requirements. Um, it is massively scalable, as I mentioned. There's not just a number of uh, uh, not just a number of clusters out there that are powered today with Calico, mainly due to its kind of simplicity, uh, simplicity, um, uh, but also the number of nodes. We have, you know, some clusters that are known of hundreds of nodes uh, running uh, out there. Uh, in terms of adoption uh, from from uh, our partners in terms of the, the the cloud partners out there, the major AWS, Google, Azure, IBM, all have standardized that are using Project Calico for network policy, uh, as well as um, uh, uh, Calico has been adopted by a, you know a handful of uh, Kubernetes distros uh, like Docker Enterprise and um, Rancher provides it as as an option uh, for the CNI uh, as well. Uh, we're also work very closely with uh, Red Hat and Red Hat OpenShift teams um, as um, uh, Calico is uh, an option, a supported option um, uh, for OpenShift today. And we have numerous customers who are using it with OpenShift 4 uh, with the operator uh, model as well. So um, as I also mentioned, um, uh, the you know Calico can run pretty much uh, everywhere. Uh, not only uh, limited to Kubernetes itself, um, because uh, Calico can protect what we call host endpoints and provide kind of micro segmentation for also host endpoints uh, as well. Um, so uh, all the managed uh, Kubernetes services you can run Calico there. Um, and uh, all kind of all the other districts that you see um, on this uh, screen. 
So now that you have a you know high overview of uh, what Calico is, um, let's kind of dive into what uh, network policies are, right? Uh, in, in Kubernetes, so uh, Kubernetes by design uh, provides a flat um, network architecture. That means that uh, the two dimensions around connectivity and uh, uh, security are intentionally uh, independent and therefore by design when you launch a kubernetes cluster uh every pod that you launch will get its kind of ip address its um its network will be uh, created using the cni however um every pod can talk to any every, uh, any other pod in the uh, in the cluster um across any namespace so uh by design this is kind of the approach uh, of Kubernetes network um, is. Um, um, and of course, the dynamic nature of pods allows the, you know, the, the IP allocation uh, to be also dynamic. So when pods are launched across various nodes, they're, uh, they're launched with um, uh, dynamic IP addresses. It's not deterministic. Um, and sometimes um, the, the IP addresses of uh, those pods, depending on your approach, they could be non-routable, meaning that, for example, if you're an on-prem deployment, you can be using an uh, encapsulated model where um, the IPs are only locally significant. Uh, but in the cases of um, you know, uh, a managed Kubernetes cluster, for example, you, you know, they're usually you're uh, using uh, IP addresses that are routable within your uh, VPC. So those are the you know the three key uh, factors um, uh, that uh, an user needs to consider around just why there is a need for network policies. Um, so um, because of those factors, there needs to be a different approach uh, around the six step back, a different approach around. Uh, the need for network policies because, because one by default there's nothing stopping communication between the pod to the pod ip is, is ephemeral it is uh dynamic and therefore it's you can't really use ex uh, um, existing firewalling and perimeter based firewall to uh, allow or deny or create zones for your um uh, for your cluster so because of those reasons uh there needed to be a better way to create uh network policies um that are Need to be kind of label based, uh, so it's not IP based. It's label based, similar to a lot of things in Kubernetes, uh, using labels and selectors. Uh, the second is uh, around it being declarative. That means it's it's not um, you know you use the native uh, tooling to create and declaratively state the end um, um, the end state that you want uh, your network uh, behavior to be, and you know uh, which uh, pods or deployments to. Uh, can talk to which uh, uh, services and deployments in a declarative manner. And finally, uh, in, in, um, when you create those uh, policies, you want to make sure that they're dynamic in nature as you know, the you know, pods uh, come up and go down uh, pretty dynamically. Uh, therefore, the, the policy cannot, you know, when you're creating any network policy, it cannot be static, it cannot be manual um, uh, because of the dynamic nature of how pods are launched and um, uh, scheduled. So uh, traditionally, if you look on the right-hand side, traditionally uh, from a network security uh, perspective, you know, if you have uh, uh, extensive kind of firewalling, perimeter firewalling capabilities uh, to create zones, uh, usually in the VM world, uh, that was, you know, you had uh, more uh, static IPs, you have zones. Uh, so you were able to create um, tenancy around and, and zoning around that, but now with the more cloud native approach, things are different. So if we take a look and comparing uh, what needs to be different and how we can actually, um, um, how the net, uh, Kubernetes network policies are actually different. Um, one, I want to highlight, there's a lot of um, uh, uh, differences, but the three that I'm highlighting, I want to kind of talk, um, uh, double click on. First, um, around where this policy needs to be applied. Um, previously, you know, you, uh, you know, if you have uh, you know multiple uh, VMs or multiple uh, nodes within within your your rack or your your um, VPC, um, you the firewalling actually does not kick in; it's not applied at within the actual uh, uh, instant or node or VM. It's applied at a different level within the network. Uh, but with pods, you have multiple pods actually residing on the uh, on the same on the same uh, VM. 
therefore you can't afford from a security um, uh, uh, perspective, you can't afford to actually uh, uh, um, apply those network policies, um, you know, further up um, uh, in, in the stack or the, 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 the network. Uh, you need to kind of apply them as close as possible to the pods or the workloads. So that's one thing that Calico does and the net, uh, Kubernetes network uh, security does. The second is around uh, how um, dynamic, uh, uh, dynamically calculated the policies uh, need. So when you have, um, again, if, because right now we're taking a label-based approach. So when you label your uh, resources um, uh, using Kubernetes labels, uh, when you label your um, when you label your um, uh, deployments. Uh, the policies need to, and the, you know, selectors need to be uh, using uh, those labels and uh, dynamically figure out how to apply the policy uh, without any manual intervention and doing it in a very, uh, very uh, quick manner. It needs to be in the in the matter of milliseconds to apply those policies uh, where they need to be applied as close as possible to the workload. So those are the things you kind of keep in mind into kind of why. Um, Kubernetes network policies are, uh, you know, the, the current approach is more appropriate to the type of workloads uh, expected in, in a Kubernetes and a cloud native uh, environment. So for you who are um, not um, familiar with Kubernetes network policies, I'll, I'd like to do a quick uh, overview. So the kind of the goal of uh, Kubernetes network policies is going to allow admins or operators or developers even to define network rules using some you know same uh, develop, deployment artifacts. So when you create a um, a, uh, a Kubernetes deployment artifact or you know YAML or use Helm or whatever, uh, you need also a way to actually specify how. Uh, uh, the uh, the rules in which you want your uh, your uh, uh, application network to kind of uh, to behave in you know allowing certain uh, type of uh, you know connections uh, denying certain type of connections uh, from specific services to specific services and so forth. Uh, so this is what you can do with Kubernetes network policies. <clears throat> uh, it is supported natively with uh, the network policy Kubernetes API, so it is in line in line with um, and supported. I think since uh, Kubernetes 1.6 or maybe 1.7 um, uh, natively within the network policy Kubernetes API. Kubernetes itself uh, does not enforce those policies. So Kubernetes, when you when you apply those policies using YAML or any tooling or Helm um, um, or KubeCloudMint or Helm, uh, you actually just tell um, the, the network policy, the Kubernetes network policy API that this is the intended and the declarative policy that you would like to uh, enforce, but it is actually the responsibility of the chosen or the or the configured CNI uh, to in, enforce the policy on every node in the cluster. Policies are, um, uh, the Kubernetes network policies are namespace scope. Similar to a lot of things in Kubernetes, that means that you have to specify the namespace in which the policy is gonna be uh, applied. And of course, as I mentioned, everything is uses labels and selectors. Uh, so create uh, you know, your deployments and pods and label them, and then you pick a namespace as well, and then you pick a selector on where those policies need to be applied. Um, policies can specify traffic to and from namespaces, pods, or IP uh, siders. Could be a single IP or the full uh, uh, cider, uh, network cider. Uh, again, in both ingress and egress direction and they're applied in both ingress and egress directions um, um, by the CNI as close as possible to the pod itself. And they can be, as I said, they can be applied via kubectl or even Helm um, as well. Uh, also, just to uh, run through a couple of uh, notes here, um, uh, the, uh, the command centric policies are at the layer three, layer four. That means that uh, they're going to support, you know, um, IP protocols and you know uh, for there for TCP UDP um, and you can select uh, ports um, there to allow or deny. Um, I mentioned that they can be applied in ingress and egress directions. And one thing to note is that by default, um, as I mentioned, by default it's kind of everything is allowed to talk to anything. However, at the moment you apply a policy to a pod, right? Uh, and there's a policy that's applied to a pod. Uh, it's going to trigger a kind of uh, a default deny. Uh, that means that unless you explicitly um, allow a you know type of traffic in 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 the network policy, 
uh, everything else is going to be denied. So that's a, you know, a, um, that is by design and that's kind of the default behavior with Kubernetes network policies. Uh, I do believe that there are some questions that are being raised. Uh, we will have some question uh, and answer time uh, towards the towards the end. Uh, so we'll be happy to kind of answer as many as possible. So feel free to kind of keep adding your um, your questions in there. Uh, so let's take an example of a Kubernetes network policy, a very kind of straightforward example. Um, on the right-hand side, you'll see kind of our, um, um, our deployment. We have a My Namespace, um, uh, um, uh, a namespace called My Namespace. We have three uh, services uh, with labels uh, of key role and value helper front end and DB. And uh, the intention of this kind of example is to showcase uh, the YAML um, um, uh, that is used to secure the, the, the traffic in this, in this um, for this application. And specifically, we want to make sure that only traffic going from um, only TCP traffic uh, on port 6379 is allowed uh, originating from the front end service going to the database service, and all of the traffic is denied. So you can see here on the left-hand side, um, you know, I'm specifying the namespace because this is a Kubernetes network policy. Uh, the spec will show you where this policy is applied. So the policy is applied in the ingress direction uh, on the pods, all the database pods with the label role uh, equals database. And you can see here that uh, I'm not specifying the specific pod, I'm specifying the label so that that way any label with this uh, that matches this uh, pod selector, uh, uh, selector uh, label will be automatically inherit this policy. So if we scale up or scale down the, the, the pods or the deployment, uh, it's going to be automatically applied to those uh, pods. Even if the pods don't even exist by the time this policy is applied, same thing. Once they actually run up, the, the, um, the policy will be enforced onto them. The second thing I want to highlight is, is we're highlighting this is an ingress direction. Of course, you can do it in ingress or egress direction, but this is an ingress direction. And the traffic we're allowing is from pod, um, um, pod um, selected with, of uh, front end, uh, role equals front end, and only on port, uh, TCP port uh, 6379. So it's kind of somehow self explanatory. But by applying this policy on this, um, um, on, on this uh, um, uh, database pods, automatically no other uh, connection will be allowed anywhere actually, um, whether within the cluster or outside the cluster to those pods, unless it's coming from the specific uh, front end service. Uh, let's look at another example here where we are actually using a, um, instead of using labels, we're using um, 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 I, a CIDR to allow uh, the specific uh, uh, deployment of uh, uh, label of color equals red to, um, to be allowed to, uh, to communicate with an IP block of CIDR 172.18.0.0.24 in the egress direction. And you can see here the namespace has been um, uh, specified. It's applied to the, um, those uh, pods and it's allowing the egress uh, traffic to the specific CIDR. Uh, whether that CIDR within the, the, the cluster or outside or you know, public, it doesn't really matter. Um, and by default, it's gonna allow, uh, it's gonna de deny, sorry, it's gonna deny uh, all other traffic um, within the cluster or to this you know, random other CIDR. So that was kind of the second example that uses um, IP CIDRs instead of uh, labels. So this is helpful if you're, you know, if you're talking about external services outside the cluster, we can't use uh, labels. Uh, let's uh, look at also a third uh, common uh, policy uh, there. Um, uh, this is a, a recommended approach around denying, um, denying all the traffic. So as I said, because everything is open by default um, in Kubernetes, it would be good to actually deny traffic to begin with and then open traffic uh, as needed. So this is, um, as you can see here, that's the, in my, my namespace, uh, namespace, it's matching all the pods when you leave it, um, when you leave this, those, you know, curly brackets open, it's matching all the pods and it's uh, matching all types of traffic in both directions. And because you're not allowing anything under each ingress or egress, that means it's going to deny this traffic. So all the traffic, whether it's going, um, you know, incoming to the pod or leaving the pod will be the, uh, uh, denied by default. 
So now that we uh, looked at Kubernetes network policies, let's take a look at you know, what are Calico network policies. So the first thing that we want to highlight is that both Kubernetes network policies and Calico network policies are open source. Uh, there's nothing really close source about Calico network policies. Uh, Calico network policies uh, basically do everything that Kubernetes network policies do, but extend Kubernetes network policies in areas that I'm going to describe in, you know, in, throughout this slide. So it's basically, um, just to recap, that it's both open source, so you can use them, uh, you know, um, wherever Calico runs, so they do require Calico. Calico does enforce both types of policies, whether they're talking about Kubernetes network policy or uh, Calico network policy. And Calico network policies extend the power of Kubernetes network policies to do things more that are more advanced. So one of the things that, um, you know, um, just to, I'm going to run through these, um, uh, you know, added values that Kubernetes network, uh, that Calico network policies provides. Uh, of course, it's going to require Calico um, uh, to, to enforce the policy. Uh, Kubernetes network policy can be enforced or needs to be enforced by, by CNI. So if you're using Calico, great, Calico will enforce them, but you also have other options that are available out there that would enforce the, the network, uh, uh, network uh, Kubernetes network policies. Um, they can be applied, Calico network policies can be applied using kubectl or Calico Cuddle, which is our um, you know, other uh, CLI tool open source that is uh, more uh, tailored towards interacting with all things related to networking, policies, CNI configuration, all that. Um, it supports policy ordering precedence. So if you're coming from, from the kind of uh, ACL uh, access list creation, there's the, of course, there's a big dependency on where the policy ordering is really important. So where things are, that, you know, that's really um, uh, important. So you can actually specify the order in which the policy is enforced. Uh, there is, uh, if you are using Istio and Envoy, uh, we actually have done a, quite a, you know, uh, powerful integration to allow, extend basically the power of uh, network policies beyond layer three, layer four, so that uh, you can actually create a single policy and a single artifact YAML that defines not only layer three and layer four rules, but also uh, all the way to layer seven. So if, um, if you want to have, you know, um, um, you know, a policy that defines um, you know, uh, you know, allowing TCP access on a specific port and only allowing like HTTP gets. Uh, so the layer three, layer four would happen um, and would be enforced by Calico and the layer seven would be enforced by Envoy. But from a user experience perspective, you define both in a single YAML and that can be pretty powerful. Um, and that does require Calico network policies. <clears throat> So uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, can you know Calico itself can protect VMs and host interfaces, not just pods. So if you want to actually apply, a good use case for this would be actually the Kubernetes master nodes or um, you know etcd or even just regular workloads that are running on your VMs um, in in your environment. That way you can use the same method. You can create policies with YAML. You can label things, and you can have a single approach to apply policies, whether you're talking about pods or VMs. Um, Calico network policies also have this uh, concept of a global policy, so that can transcend multiple uh, namespaces. So it's not only scoped to the namespace. So if you have a policy that you want to apply uh, that you know allows access to uh, specific external services for all the namespaces, you can do that within one policy that is global. Um, and additionally, you can allow, um, it's not just the allow verb or allow action in the rule. You can actually do things like deny, log, and pass. Uh, so additional kind of capabilities in what you do in, um, um, as part of the policy enforcement. Finally, um, I think it's really critical to kind of mention this. Um, if you are using, if you're creating a, um, a, um, a, a, Kubernetes network policy and uh, for a deployment uh, with a specific label. Typically, um, uh, you want the policy to be applied to that uh, uh, deployment uh, with that label. Typically, if a user or, an, you know, or, or, uh, or um, uh, you know, if your user or team or um, tool has access to create a pod, then they also have access from an RBAC perspective to update or change the labels on the pod. That means that um, pod, uh, R, uh, sorry, pod labels are not uh, R backed. Um, and therefore there's, there's a way that uh, someone could actually 
uh, change or update the pod labels and uh, mess up the policy enforcement because uh, they've done so. So a more uh, appropriate or more secure way to actually ensure that your policies are applied to the right set of uh, pods or deployment is to use um, the service account selector. Because typically uh, namespace and service account um, are usually uh, are backed, and typically the users don't create their own namespaces. That's kind of pre-configured for them. Uh, and service accounts the same uh, same approach. Uh, they are um, are backed, and therefore uh, you can specify in the policy uh, rules uh, use a namespace selector or a service account selector to allow or deny traffic coming from uh, any pod uh, with a specific service account or going to any pod with a service account. So it's a more secure way to restrict um, uh, the rules of your, of your policy and ensure that uh, uh, there's no, nobody can bypass them. Finally, um, uh, all of everything that I mentioned so far is available uh, and you can use it if you're using Calico um, CNI uh, when you create the Calico network policy. Uh, we use the Calico network policy as a foundation for, um, we, you know, we do have an enterprise platform called Calico Enterprise, and we have very extensive advanced enterprise capabilities that basically build up on uh, Calico network policies. Um, we have things like DNS policies, so using DNS or fully qualified domain names instead of just IP or labels. That's a, um, that, uh, that is um, uh, uh, a very interesting use case that a lot of our customers use. We also have policy tiering, so you have you can create a policy tier um, that you know for admins, for example, or infosec teams that would allow you to create policies that take precedence before any application policy uh, traffic is allowed. Uh, additionally, from policy previewing and staging, that's a very critical um, uh, uh, part of uh, the lifecycle of uh, uh, policy uh, enforcement is to ensure that. Um, you, you understand the impact of uh, applying policy changes, so you're not in a position to uh, apply a policy that would uh, uh, impact application traffic. So we actually have a really cool capability around previewing in real time what the impact of a, a, a policy rule. So if you're change, making any changes to the policy, you can see what type of traffic is going to impact before you actually enforce it. So those are just a, uh, a couple of um, advanced use cases for Calico network policies that are available in the enterprise platform. So let's take a look at some examples for, um, for Calico network policies. And you can see here that uh, the API version and the kind is a bit different than what we've seen before. Uh, it's, the API version is projectcalico.org. Uh, so it's... it's uh, uh, then automatically it will allow or would, uh, would allow those um, um, uh, CRDs and uh, would allow you to create uh, the, uh, the additional capabilities that Calico network policies provide. So um, um, here in this example, uh, you can see that we're applying a policy to, um, uh, you know, at the namespace level using the namespace selector. So it's applying a um, uh, 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 it's applying the policy on the um, on the shape equal circle uh, um, or any namespace with that label basically. So this is a pretty um, uh, pretty good to kind of note that. So if you have once you create multiple namespaces, you can actually create some labels for them and then use a global network policy that applies only to uh, to uh, namespaces that have such labels. And you can use, as a, on the right-hand side, you can use kubectl to manage those uh, 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 Calico network policies. Uh, in this case, I'm looking at all the, you know, getting all the global network policies, and you can see here um, that I, I have them listed there. So you can interact with kubectl uh, as well. Let's take another um, uh, advanced policy here where we want to use uh, a couple of things I want to highlight. First of all, this is a, a, a Calico network policy. Uh, it is, uh, it, it's not a global network policy, it's just a network policy. So it is a namespace uh, scoped. Uh, it is applied on the my namespace namespace. namespace. Uh, and we want to make sure that we're uh, denying um, 
all the uh, TCP uh, traffic coming from this specific namespace uh, that is um, um, the SRE dash account. So um, it is being applied um, um, applied to the helper uh, uh, pods or um, deployment, and it's specifically denying the traffic. And you can see here, this is the this is new in Calico uh, policies. Uh, in Kubernetes and policies, every rule that you put is basically the allow. Otherwise, it's everything is denied. Here, you have more flexibility around explicitly denying uh, traffic, uh, as you can see here. Also, you notice that we have an order, so you can actually have uh, higher orders and lower orders. Um, so, uh, defining where you know when exactly to apply this rule. And uh, I'm using the service account, which is uh, what I kind of described then as something that Calico network policies allow. And not only I'm denying the traffic, I'm adding another verb um, um, to log all the IC, ICMP traffic that is coming from the namespace um, uh, of, uh, that is labeled colored equals green. And this will be logged with uh, the CNI logs. Um, uh, so every, every time there is a, there's a, a traffic connection to uh, establish to, um, between this namespace to uh, this specific uh, pod, uh, we'll not take any action, but we'll log it. So this is another kind of more advanced use case uh, for Calico policies. Another uh, use case here, uh, what you'll see here on the right-hand side is actually uh, a snapshot from the Calico Enterprise dashboard. Um, I kind of mentioned that there are, um, there are uh, tiers. Uh, you can see here every column that you see here is a tier, so a security tier, platform tier, and there's a default tier. So typically application developers and kind of owners using um, um, the, the Kubernetes cluster will have uh, will apply the tiers here, but um, we'll apply sorry, the policies here uh, on the right hand side. They will show up here, but um, for example, if you have a security team or an infosec team that is uh, uh, responsible for uh, standardizing kind of the enterprise uh, requirements from uh, um, across all the the tenants or um, application owners um, that are using this cluster, this is a great use case for tiering. So um, the, uh, the, whatever uh, policies are defined in this tier will be enforced first. And then once they're uh, allowing the traffic, the platform tier policies will be uh, evaluated and enforced. And then if that all that is good, then the uh, policies defined by the application owners will be um, applied and enforced in that order. Um, I'll also kind of mention the the, uh, the use case or the you know using the uh, DNS policies. So you can see here that, for example, the platform team it had created this uh, global network policy uh, that uh, matches on a namespace label. So every namespace uh, you can see here every namespace that is labeled Twilio equals allowed, and usually those labels are um, are back. That means that when you create the a creator update the namespace, you allow that, you know, you add that label. And dynamically, every namespace that has that label will, will, uh, will have this policy um, uh, enforced and allowed. And in this case, we want to make sure that every namespace with that label uh, can, uh, uh, is able to talk to uh, Twilio uh, APIs on uh, this wildcard DNS or fully qualified domain name or subdomain name in this case in the egress direction. And here you can see that we're not using an IP because it's dynamic. So we're using a domain name. So it's easier to create those policies um, and easier to make sure that uh, it is dynamically applied to every namespace that has this specific label applied to it. So um, uh, with that being said, so this is kind of another kind of use case specifically related to the enterprise uh, features that I uh, was referring to. So with that, I, uh, I would like, I mean, I know I've been sp speaking a lot and I know that there's a lot of uh, questions um, in, in there. So um, we'll, we'll jump to them in a minute. Uh, but that was basically a recap of both what Kubernetes network policies are, how to use them, what's the, what's the syntax, why they're useful. And then we kind of took, uh, looked at the Calico network policies um, and how they differentiate, you know, what are advanced use cases that they address. Uh, and I want to leave you with some takeaways to make sure that you know, uh, you know, uh, this session is helpful for you. So, um, if we take a step back and kind of look at what we discussed, uh, Kubernetes network policies, of course, enable application to declare kind of segmentation controls, uh, security controls for the application traffic to allow or deny 
um, uh, traffic to the workloads. So that's kind of the intention of it. Um, Calico network policies can extend uh, Kubernetes network policies and kind of provide a sophisticated superset uh, to that of Kubernetes network policies. Again, both are open source and both you can use them. Um, uh, you know, and they're uh, helpful for those advanced use cases uh, that um, you may face. And of course, we, you know, Calico can provide the scalable implementation of the network policies. Um, we've been proven, as I mentioned, um, adopted by all the managed Kubernetes service, uh, uh, managed services, I, uh, IKS, EKS, AKS, GKE, uh, which speaks volume to kind of how uh, robust and performant Calco is. Uh, and also don't forget that we have also a set of, um, um, a set of uh, uh, enterprise features um, and an enterprise platform. So if you are interested, I'll actually have a, a note about that in, in the next slide. But um, in terms of additional resources, uh, definitely uh, head over to docs.projectcalico.org. There's a whole long list of really cool uh, uh, sample uh, uh, policies. So you can take a look and better understand the different use cases, how to use them for both Kubernetes network policies as well as Calico network policies. Um, I also found this, um, uh, this kind of, Ahmed uh, is an engineer at um, Google with GKE. He has a really good um, uh, resource uh, on GitHub with a lot of really helpful uh, policies and examples for policies. Um, and um, it's a really cool community uh, driven project. So feel free to kind of take a look at that. Um, Apologize, should have kind of um, removed some of those, but we also have uh, a couple of upcoming events uh, next next two weeks. Um, we have, like, similar to what uh, um, this webinar uh, is, we actually have uh, close to you know two to three uh, webinars on a weekly basis. Right now, they're free uh, for you to look at. Those are some of the existing ones we've done so far, covering a, a long list of topics, both uh, you know around Calico, security, networking, best practices. Uh, all of the above. Uh, so the next couple of ones are around um, running uh, 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 running Calico on your on-prem or self-managed, I would say, Kubernetes cluster. Uh, great session coming up. And there's also, uh, we just launched a Calico enterprise multi-cluster management. So, um, you know, uh, for multi-cluster management, uh, po uh, policy federation, identity federation, a really cool topic and a really exciting uh, really exciting, um, uh, 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 you know, topic uh, for 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 youth. And if you head to tagera.io forward slash events, feel free to kind of sign up for for those events coming up. Again, they're free and they're available for you, and you can always go back and watch those uh, videos, including this one. Um, final note: If uh, you haven't really tried uh, Calc Enterprise before, or you're not a user. Um, it's a really cool. Um, we have a really cool uh, trial. Um, service. So if you head to tagear.io for slash trial, we can provide you, uh, you fill out a couple of information, uh, give us, you know, uh, some time and we'll get back to you with a fully provisioned uh, cluster, uh, Kubernetes cluster on your favorite uh, cloud. Um, I think we support EKS, AKS, Rancher, OpenShift, uh, uh, GKE, uh, maybe I'm forgetting some, uh, and uh, KubeADM, I believe. And you can, you know, we walk you through a handful of um, labs that uh, can be really useful for you to better understand the value of our product uh, beyond what uh, what just the network policies and the open source components provide. Uh, so remember that if you're uh, if you're interested, feel free to head there. It's free and it's available for you.